welcome back to my studio. In this final part of this two-part series, we progress our sketch through to a completed painting of a dog's nose. It's time to move on to the painting, starting by blocking in using the local colour or mid-tones. The methods I show here are applicable to most mediums which involve the technique of working from dark to light, such as oils, pastels and some coloured pencils. Working as I would with pastels or oils, I leave where the highlights are going to be. This allows them to be kept clean and bright when added later. If you missed part one, please click on the link in the top right or in the description to go straight to that video. I introduce some warm colours while still working within the mid-tone ranges. Using mid-tones and dark shades, I slowly build up the shapes of the nose making note of the surface direction. Now I add in the mid-tone of the top surface and the edge that curves down to the front plane of the nose. Using a smaller brush with a darker tone, I indicate the plane changes and the shapes that form each nostril. Still working with a smaller brush, I add more definition to the base of the nose and the alar folds. Not happy with the tonal range, I decide to go darker still with the internal parts of the nostrils. As you can see, this adds extra depth and starts to bring the painting to life. Continuing to work across the nose, adjusting colours as I go, I start to introduce detail to emphasise the forms that make up the entire nose. Adding fur beneath the nose gives it context and helps the three-dimensional form. Flipping the canvas at this stage gives me a different perspective on the painting. With traditional media, I often use a mirror or turn my art upside down. This can really help you zone in on any mistakes. Starting to add the darker tones now and I always leave the highlights until the end. This enables me to better judge the balance of my painting. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell to keep up to date with my latest content. Taking a step back, or in this case, zooming out, as with taking a different perspective with a mirror or flipping the canvas, allows you to make a decision on the overall progress and how much detail to include. Satisfied with the progress made with the overall shape and proportion of the nose, I flip the canvas back and continue to build up the detail. Moving on to the lighter shades, I start on the highlights, but still avoid the brightest until the very end. You often find that you don't have to go pure white with the highlights, it all depends on your subject, its surroundings and the effect you're aiming for. Using the darkest tone to build on the details and show cleaner edges, my style is not to be photorealistic but representational. 
this means that my work is detailed, but clearly a piece of art. On the lowest part of the nose, there is reflected light from the fur below. This reflected light gives an indication of a plane change, as the nose curves down and in towards the upper lips, giving depth. Now for one of my favourite parts, adding the final highlights. I find this is where your artwork can really come together. With just the right amount of detail and highlights balanced against your darkest tones, the painting is near complete. Many artists find it difficult to decide when to stop. I often take a break at this point and come back later to assess if any final changes are needed. If you feel that continuing at this point will spoil your work, this is a good indication that your work is probably finished. What things do you find difficult to draw or paint? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, find inspiration and be creative. Thank you for joining me today. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe, don't forget the notification bell so you keep up to date with my latest videos, leave a comment below if you found my art tip helpful, and stick around to check out some of my other videos here.